Good morning and welcome back to the lecture series on narrative mode and fiction. So, today we are going to start with a new topic magical realism. Let us try to look at the provenance, the historical background of magical realism. Where from did magical realism churn out? What led to the magical realism? And after uh, understanding the historical background, what preceded and uh, what uh, kind of provoked this new movement in uh, art, in literature, we are going to also uh, describe, we are also going to discuss in uh, detail what magical realism is. So, in uh, 1925, uh, German art critic uh, Franz Rowe uh, coined this term magical realism for the first time in reference to a new postmodern artistic tendency and he saw this tendency appearing first in European painting which uh, replaced the expressionist movement. So, we have to uh, understand that uh, magical realism was uh, preceded by expressionism uh, in art uh, in the European milieu, in the European scenario. So, in the term magical realism, uh, Franz Rue uh, is intending to use magic as opposed to mystic or abstract and he suggests here that mystery does not manifest clarity uh, to the represented world, but uh, in fact hides the reality from the represented world. So, moreover we see that Rho uh, chooses the term magical realism uh, instead of post expressionism, because when we say pre or post to a certain movement, uh, we in a way say that uh, there is a disjuncture, but also certain overlaps. He wanted to signify uh, in fact that there is a conscious departure from expressionism and hence not post expressionism. He believes that post expressionism kind of shows like I said a chronological relationship with the expressionist movement. I would like to give an example here, let us say modernism and postmodernism. There, there is a disjunction, there is a breakaway in postmodernism, but we also see a uh, like plenty of overlaps between the two movements uh, and so a, a chronological continuum uh, which uh, Franz Rowe uh, consciously wanted to avoid in this case and hence not post expressionism, but uh, magical realism, right. Now, Irene Gwinter uh, located magical realism as first coming uh, from the German romantic philosopher novelist. Uh, a novelist describes an ideal philosophical protagonist as capable of integrating uh, the magical meanings with the ordinary phenomena, the everyday phenomena. So, the magic like I said is not a take off from the uh, ordinary, but is interspersed with the ordinary and the mundane. So, for novelists absolute has uh, both a subjective and an objective aspect uh, which unites uh, realism with idealism. So, in this convergence, in this unity of uh, uh, realism and idealism, uh, magical realism is born. So, magical idealism uh, requires a complete control over the body and the soul. Uh, in other words, the external and internal senses. This is something that novelists had to say. So, we see that in magical realism, it is through poetry that uh, a magical idealist understands how to attain a magical change of the sensible world. We see novelists using the term syncretism for the first time uh, and according to novelists' uh, doctrine, uh, syncretism transforms conflict into spiritual playful forms which enables an understanding of uh, correlation uh, and comparison. So, when we have opposed categories, the traditionally uh, dyadic uh, dualistic categories, we are not uh, looking at binarism, we are not looking at a clash or uh, a kind of difference, 
but rather the magical that can emerge as a result of their interfacing. A novelist states that a magical ide idealist should have the power to quote him uh, to make thoughts into things and things into thoughts." Unquote. In other words, the soul externalizes itself in nature in the same way as the nature internalizes itself in the mind. So, the human nature and the outer nature interface and uh, the magic is burned, uh, sparked out of this interface. According to Franz Rowe, uh, magical realism occupied this middle ground where the magical realist was neither the practical uh, Machiavellian politician nor the apolitical man that listens only to the voice of an ethical. A magical realist should uh, typically be at once political and yet ethical. Chris Warnes associates both novelist and uh, Rose uh, uh, conceptualizations of magical realism with the limits of mimesis, how much can we uh, imitate the uh, world onto world and uh, the world, the discursive world with its uh, you know uh, arbitrary happenings, uh, infinite meanings uh, cannot be exactly uh, transcribed brought into the page of an artwork of a book or into performance. There has to be a reliance on dialectics uh, between the inwardness and the outwardness. The outer is uh, interspersed, interwoven into our inner and uh, that is where the real becomes a magical real. Uh, Mir Howard Abrams uh, understands expressionism as uh, depicting uh, I quote powerful emotional states of mind. So, we also need to understand the expressionist movement which preceded the uh, magical realism. Uh, so, art critic Frederick S. Levine also echoes Rowe in writing that expressionism sought the personification of inner reality. So, reality not a, a ditto of the outer happenings, but something that reflects, that personifies our inner reality, the psychic reality too and something that wanted to project uh, emotional needs, psychological pressures uh, and private obsessions, unquote. So, expressionists are essentially reacting against realism by using highly structured uh, schematics and exalted idealism, right. So, according to Franz Rowe, magical realism was a reaction, a takeoff uh, from expressionism uh, through producing a space where our real world re emerges before our eyes. So, coming back to the ordinary through the non jaded vision. So, rather than seeking the infinite, the indefinite, and the transcendental remote meanings which underlay. Uh, the definite frame, magical realism is more interested in cracking open, in dismantling, unpacking the definite and uh, thereby examining its effect on the humanity. So, Ro refers to German artist George Schimm's uh, painting in order to explain the double sided art that strives between contraries, which is at the heart of magical realism. Here we see that the ordinary and the familiar can also refer to the spirit. So, the or we are looking at the capabilities, the capacities uh, of the ordinary and it can also speak to the question of the spiritual. Uh, the fact that uh, we are not dealing with binaries anymore. So, ordinary is not a binary opposite to the spiritual, they can actually uh, meet and uh, a magic can spark uh, as a result. So, they are not diametrically opposed. Now, Gustav Hartlaub coined the term new objectivity in relation to magical realism as a way of defining this art movement. The, the term new objectivity suggests objectivism as uh, a kind of spiritual creation. It offers a return to unsentimental uh, reality 
and a focus on the objective world as opposed to the more uh, abstract, more romantic and a more idealistic uh, uh, tendency that uh, expressionism harbors. So, in painting new objectivity is uh, most often associated with portraiture uh, and it it's it's leading practitioners so in in uh, in painting we see some of the leading practitioners of new objectivity uh, include uh, max beckman otto dix and george gross so new objectivity has since the time of these artists formed a part of latin american literature post colonial studies and uh, criticisms related to non-Western uh, way of the world, the non-Western existence. Uh, so, the interest of new objectivity once again lay in the magic that inhabits the, which is inbuilt in the ordinary. So, as opposed to expressionism, which uh, was deeply invested with a sense of exoticism and which emphasized the fantastic um, extraterrestrial and uh, objects that are far away from our, our familiar world, remote objects, that was something that interested expressionism. Um, apart from this, we see in new objectivity re emergence from that dreamscape coming back to the this worldly to the reality. So, re-emergence from dreamscape to the reality and celebrating the mundane as a way of you know moving away from the transcendental and even the religious themes. Rowe calls this as a movement of decantation and clarification and Rowe distinguishes uh, expressionism, futurism and post expressionism through the lens of objectivity. So, in Germany we see uh, an interesting uh, phenomenon where new objectivity frequently portrays uh, Weimar society in a satirical manner, how new objectivity treats the uh, post World War I uh, uh, German society. So, the Weimar culture refers to arts and sciences produced in Germany during the interwar period. Uh, this is the period when we are talking about uh, the defeat in World War I and the rise of Hitler. And this, uh, you know, the Weimar culture, Weimar society centers the 1920s Berlin. Uh, new objectivity. Uh, in other words, magical realism represents the uh, contemporary realities uh, at that time in Germany, the horrors of Germany uh, reflecting uh, or representing the urban life, the dirty cities, machines, factories uh, and it drew concentration on the individual, the individual that is lost in a world which uh, he can no longer understand. and. Uh, he cannot control. It is representing the external and determinants uh, diminishing human possibilities, diminishing the human um, existence. Now, the Weimar culture is captured in new objectivity portraits of Germany that is suffering from depression of defeat in World War I. Uh, it is talking about the economic inflation and the seething anger. Uh, cynicism and social division, all of which would uh, eventually lead to the Second World War. Uh, it it uh, was celebrating a return to reality after expressionism's, uh, you know, distortion of a reality and uh, all sorts of uh, exaggerations that ex expressionism indulged in. So, expressionism was an existential flight, like we have already um, discussed by now. Uh, which touched the real world from a mystical perspective, a remote perspective, whereas magical realism makes a return to the real world. According to Massimo Bontempelli, who is an Italian poet, dramatist and critic, uh, also a significant figure in the development of magical realism in Europe. Uh, so, according to Bonten Pelli, uh, World War I created uh, a tabula rasa from which a new era began.
Montempelli would go on to say that as humanity was starting afresh, starting anew with uh, almost, uh, you know, it, it bargained a new lease of life after World War I. Uh, and one ought to feel elementary once again with this new start, new lease of life. Uh, one ought to feel uh, elementary again and rebuild from uh, this state of nothingness, create one's own myths which would help bind the people together. So, uh, apart from novelist Anne Rowe, Bontempelli's uh, magical realism reflects a desire, a desire for a new mythography, a new way of looking at the map or a new sense of uh, geography that uh, take into consideration the connections between the past and the present. So, while the development of expressionist painting was marked by a moving away from the nature uh, towards uh, rejecting its representative uh, imitative meaning uh, that, uh, that, that uh, informed the realist tradition, in futurism the objective world appeared in an abrupt and dislocated form. And in post expressionism we see there is this desire, the aim to reintegrate reality into the heart of what is visible, what is uh, tactile and tangible around us. So, recognizing and re-entering the real things, uh, the ground in which the most diverse ideas in the world can take root has been reconquered, albeit in new ways. Franz Rowe argues that the deeper meaning and mysticism of expressionist artwork disturbs the uh, secure tranquility. So, he, there, is, there are certain class assumptions, class associations with um, expressionist artwork we see. So, expressionism as Rowe sees it is fraught with uh, vulgar bourgeoisification. Uh, Whereas the labor class can appreciate an art that is uh, sans grandeur, uh, sans loftiness and something that appeals to the civil by reflecting uh, a sense of restraint, prudence and discretion and, and something that incorporates the experience of the monotony of hard labor. So, uh, hard labor uh, being represented in art reconciles uh, the common people with the artistic process, the creation of art. So, magical realism believes in sobriety as a way of radiating magicality and spirituality. This is what Franz Rowe has to say. This, uh, you know, uh, magicality. Uh, emanating from the ordinary is possible through unlikely combinations of events um, that lead to the marvel, marvelous results, right. Uh, so, we see that modern and postmodern uh, going back to our earlier discussions, they are really interested in these unlikely combinations and the staccato effect, right where uh, the harmony uh, or and, and the familiar, uh, you know, reading the familiar perception is, uh, I mean, kind of uh, unnerved, uh, dismantled, uh, cracked open and um, unsettled. So, we are shocked and we are forced to think afresh. <clears throat> As a departure from the artistic tradition of uh, realism which values uh, empiricism, experimentation, observation and transcribing that observation through descriptions on page, uh, something that aims at creating art that is as true to the human experience as uh, possible. So, effectively establishing the literary equivalent to uh, anthropology, ethnography and linguistics. On the other hand, expressionism um, sought to present what Rowe calls as the fantastic dreamscape. Now, the real in magical realism does not reproduce like a photo, not a photograph to its finest detail, but it is recreating the ordinary through a reconstruction of what Irene Gwinter would call a spiritual reconstruction. 
So, this refers to uh, mankind's constant oscillation between, uh, I would quote uh, Gwinter here, devotion to the world of dreams and adherence to the world of reality. So, our, our attachment to both the worlds leads to a syncretism, which is the magical effect, the effect of the marvelous. In the words of Franz Roux, I quote uh, the marvel by which a variable commotion crystallizes into a clear set of constants. Magical realism delves into the impossible for a better exploration of the mundane uh, and not in an attempt to destroy the mundane. So, approaching the mundane through alternative meanings. Magical and realism, when we juxtapose them, bring them together within the same term, the, it, suggests, uh, it suggests an oxymoron that describes the new art. So, uh, we are dealing with opposition as the term itself suggests. The movement is about what happens when two uh, opposed categories meet, not always a conflict, but something really interesting, new meanings can emerge. So, uh, magical realism is essentially constituted of these two parts, the expression of the magic or the impossible, the improbable within the conventions of literary realism. Thus, magical realism was a return to reality, but it carried the baggage of expressionism's uh, existential voyage to a certain extent, a mix of wild flights and anchored realities. Uh, Rowe defines it as the treatment of the quotidian, the ordinary, as a product of the astonishingly uh, inexplicable. Here we would like to stop our lecture and we will meet again with another round of discussions on the same topic. Thank you.